This is what we're talking about when we talk about contact tracing. It's not an invasion of privacy. What we want to do is find the individuals when they are at the highest risk of coming down with COVID-19 because of their exposure to a previous case. When we do this, we can ask a small number of people to stay home for two weeks while they're at that high risk, rather than asking the entire community to stay home. We need to be able to do contact tracing quickly if it's going to be effective. The whole premise of contact tracing rests on being able to find people before they're infectious with COVID-19. That way we can let them know that they need to be staying home, staying away from others, and we're able to minimize the risk in the general public. This way we're able to keep our economy open uh, because we've eliminated those people from that pool of the population that are going to potentially be perpetuating the transmission of the virus. If we are not able to do that quickly, we run the risk of needing to go back into a situation where the entire community needs to quarantine. This is our way of giving you an early alert. Think of it like you would any other kind of health alert. For example, if you knew that your grandmother had a carbon monoxide leak in her house, you would tell her so she could get out and get to safety. In the same way, if you knew that you were potentially becoming infectious with COVID-19, you'd probably let your grandma know so she could postpone her visit to you. When we tell somebody that they've been exposed to COVID-19, it's in the hopes that they will make those good choices to keep others around them safe.